Um, when a professor tries to brainwash you with nonsense, challenge them. Raise your hand and say, you know, that's not accurate and I refuse to accept what you're trying to preach to us. It's, it's not accurate and it's against my values. Hi, this is Sam Antonio with Campus Liberty Alliance, and I'm sitting down with Alex Newman. He is a writer for the New American Magazine. Hello. Let's go ahead and welcome Alex Newman. Thank you, Sam. Nice to be here. Now, I know one of the things that you're doing is that you're working with the Leadership Institute, which is Morton Blockwell's organization. Uh, what things are you doing with the youth and college campuses there? Uh, one of the things we're really focusing on is uh, organizing the youth, getting uh, groups going, helping out with uh, student publications, and just trying to get them trained and motivated to uh, you know, get into the political system and, and really to win. That's uh, what's, what it comes down to. We need to win. So. Well, what's interesting is that you're in Colorado, which traditionally has always been a conservative Republican state, but the last couple of election cycles, it's gone the other way. What have you found working with young people out in the state of Colorado? What have, have you found in regards to the liberty movement? Are they more positive about that? Well, there is a burgeoning liberty movement in Colorado, absolutely, especially among the youth. Um, it's still, you know, fairly small but uh, a small group of people can do a lot of work. Uh, the, you know, the dedicated leftists, they're also a small group. They just happen to be well organized, well funded, and well trained. So if we can accomplish this with the Liberty Movement, that would be fantastic. Now, working with young people there, what have you found has been the key issue? Is it to end in the Fed? Has it been financial, economic issues? Has it been cultural issues? Ending the Fed is definitely a big issue, I've found. It's, it, you know, a couple of years ago, nobody would even know what you were talking about if you said <laughs> end the Fed. But now it seems to be a really hot button issue with mm -hmm. a lot of students, especially with the economic crisis. They see they're not going to have jobs. And, you know, so it's a serious issue for a lot of people. Uh, the pro-life movement in Colorado is also really picking up steam. Uh, they had a uh, personhood amendment vote where they were going to uh, change the Constitution through a ballot initiative that would have... Uh, basically recognized unborn children as children legally and so that really riled up uh, the pro-life movement of course Planned Parenthood sent in the big guns and you know so there was opposition to that as well but that was refreshing to see um, generally there's still a lot of apathy on college campuses of course mm -hmm. among the youth but um, you know hopefully with what's going on people will start getting more active uh, especially once they see how important it is to our future so Okay. I just remember reading a couple of years ago, uh, Pat Buchanan talked about, you know, the conservatives normally go into business. They're in the business-oriented side, and all the liberals get into journalism, all into the public policy area. You know, Pat Buchanan, his background being in journalism, going into the media, and he said that was a problem, is that we needed more conservatives, constitutionalists in that. Now, have you seen working with young people, are they going into those new avenues now, or more of them pursuing more the journalistic route? I think that tends to be the case that conservatives, uh, they tend to want to work in business and be mm -hmm. productive and produce things, whereas, uh, you know, the liberals and the leftist extremists would rather seize the reins of power and just steal from the productive people. So that's uh, still going to be a problem, and I imagine it always will. Um, but. Hopefully we can see a, a little bit of a shift in that. I've met a lot of conservatives that are getting degrees in uh, poli-sci mm -hmm. and uh, still not too much in journalism, unfortunately. It's an um, you know, overwhelming amount is actually business. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can you know, start breaking into these fields as well over time. Yeah, you've written a lot about the Federal Reserve, monetary policy, uh, especially about the global economy. I'm looking at students who are graduating here in the next couple of years. They're graduating with huge amounts of debts. And I'm concerned about their job prospects. What is your future? Now, you've done a lot of writing on what's been going on globally. Uh, kind of touch upon what you see here and within the next year and within the next maybe five or ten years. What's going to happen with the American economy? And then kind of bring that out. What's going to happen with the world economy as a whole? Well, right now, actually, I was just reading an article a couple of days ago, really depressing. 85% uh, of the kids who are graduating from college this year, uh, you know, most of them with an average of between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars in debt, mm -hmm. are planning on moving back to their parents' house. Uh, they can't find jobs. There's mm -hmm. nothing to do. And maybe if they're lucky, they'll get a job waiting tables. Obviously, not in their field where they got a degree. And unfortunately, unless something changes here pretty soon, I think that this is a trend that we're going to continue to see. Um, you know, the Federal Reserve is just going all out with the printing presses. Uh, we are seeing deflation in certain asset classes like housing and, you know, the labor market as well. 
But overall, I think with all this money printing, when the velocity of money increases, we're eventually going to have to see some inflation, uh, possibly hyperinflation. And you know, it's, it's really not going to be good for the American economy in particular, because right now we really depend on exporting paper dollars to the rest sure. of the world to bring in goods and services and petroleum particularly. And as our dollar goes down in value, that's just going to get tougher and tougher. And, you know, we're going to have to become more self-reliant. And unless we have some really radical shifts in policy pretty soon, I think this is a trend that's going to continue and accelerate. And, um, you know, around the world, it's, uh, it's going to be probably a similar scenario. I don't think they'll be as bad off as the U.S. Right now, we're in a pretty unique position. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of growth in Asia right now. Some of the northern European countries are still doing okay. Uh, there is a lot of unrest throughout uh, southern Europe, you know, the pig countries and France. But, but Africa, of course, is still doing terrible. But hopefully we can see some growth uh, around the world and hopefully some policy shifts here in America to get us back, uh, you know, to the prosperous and free nation that we're supposed to be. Now, you have a unique perspective because right now, temporarily, you're living in Colorado, but you live full-time in Sweden. Uh, what are the European perspectives of America? Of course, we hear everything in the media and what they think about us, and it's not very highly rated, but actually living in Europe, and I've been there many times myself, and the perspective I got there was much different from when you read in the American media, but, but living there, you know, you're not a tourist, you're living there, what is the perspective Europeans have on America, and in particular, uh, American youth? There's definitely a lot of hostility right now towards Americans. It's it's unfortunate, but you know the wars have played an important role in that. Uh, there's people see America as kind of a, you know, kind of a bully. I hate to say it, but uh, you know our government has really kind of given us a bad reputation overseas. Uh, you know the torture is also a big issue among, especially Europeans. Uh, they find that fairly barbaric. It's ironic that. Um, they, you know, they're expressing all this anger with us. Uh, where I live in Sweden, they have the military in Afghanistan too. But you know, the Swedes don't think about that when they're attacking me for being American. So you know, it, it is kind of a global problem, but America seems to get a lot of the hostility. Um, but what was interesting, I was in the Middle East in uh, November of last year on the Arabian Peninsula, and actually there the hostility wasn't even as bad as in Europe, because um, a lot of these Middle Eastern people, they understand, you know, a lot of them live under tin pot dictators. Sure. So they understand that, you know, the people are not the government. Just because the regime is doing something doesn't mean that that has the support of the people. It doesn't mean that the people agree with it. And, you know, they, they understand that, especially people in countries where they don't really have you know, self-governance, they really understand that a lot of times governments don't represent the people. Something goes into college, we know most of the universities are very much to the left. What advice would you give to a young person who's in a university who does hold uh, constitutionalist values, who's very liberty oriented, you know, what can they do to fight the tide of liberalism on campus? Really, I would say you have to get involved. Uh, it's so important that you get involved. If you go to any college campus, you see, you know, just look through the roster of student organizations. You have dozens of leftist groups, well-funded, well-organized, uh, you know, and on the right, we, ha we really have so little. Uh, but we really need to, you know, redouble our efforts, get uh, publications going, start, you know, spreading the truth on your campus, do activism. Um, when a professor tries to brainwash you with nonsense, challenge them. Raise your hand and say, you know, that's not accurate and I refuse to accept except what you're trying to preach to us. It's, it's not accurate and it's against my values. And you know, just make it known. If, if you have problems, you know, write a blog post about it. Get their name out there. Make them look silly. And it, just you know, show them that it's not acceptable. Um, and really, just get active on campus. Do, do what you can to spread your ideas. Um, you, know, you owe it to your philosophy. Uh, get trained. Uh, learn all you can. Read. Become educated so that you can you know, more successfully battle with this ideology that really, in the end, seeks to enslave you.